welcome back everybody so i've cut out the pieces that i need now for my lining one of these for the regular face mask and one lining section for the bandana face mask so what i'm going to do now is tilt the camera down so that you can see what i'm actually working on rather than look at me so here goes sorry if it gets a bit wobbly for a second but there you're now facing down and i am going to show you how we do the next step right just something you can do is on each edge this is the front this is the nose and this is the chin this is the nose and that's the chin so on each of these long edges on your lining only the lining only i'm going to trim off about two millimeters of my lining fabric so down the one long edge you take off a couple of millimeters pin this if you if it's going to move on you just pin it. I'm going to do that on this edge as well. And because I'm making a bandana one too, I use the two long edges and I trim about two millimeters off the long edge. I will explain now what I've, why I've done this. And then we trim a millimeter or two off the top edge okay so the reason we do that is because when we put the two pieces together we want the lining fabric to fold right behind the main outer fabric and we don't want it to stick through and you don't want to be able to see it from the right side and what that does is because the lining is slightly smaller than the main piece it naturally tucks itself in and that's what we want to do so that is why we do it the reason i don't get you to do that when you do the initial cutting out is simply because it's easier to have one pattern than two so there we have our two pieces for the bandana and here i've got my two pieces for the uh, regular face covering so now what you want to do is if like me one of them is not the right sides together you put right sides together feel free to use the clips in the sewing room remember we don't use pins in the sewing room anymore for health and safety reasons children use that room and we don't want to accidentally leave any pins in the carpet because they're impossible to see and pick them all up so we are going to next sew a one centimeter seam all the way along the front curved edge that's the center seam do that on both pieces of your fabric mask so this is on straight stitch this is on uh, the regular headband, uh, headband, sorry, I'm thinking headbands for heroes here, aren't I? So I'm going to just go along. Stitch that all the way. You do not have to back tack because the ends are going to get enclosed in another seam anyway. So you don't have to worry about that. So that's the lining one sewn. And I repeat that on the main fabric. To be fair, I don't use a one centimeter seam allowance exactly. I simply use the width of my foot. So it's up to you. It's not going to make a massive difference to this mask. It'll either be a tiny little bit smaller or a tiny little bit bigger, depending on how wide you make your seam so now i've done both of those because we've got a curve and for anybody who knows anything 
about sewing and for those of you who don't this is where you learn that when you have a curve you want to snip it so that it lies nice and flat when you turn it the other way around so snip up to almost your stitching line but not all the way through please otherwise you'll have to go and restitch it so i put a centimeter or so apart and only on the curved section this straighter section here is it doesn't need it so i've done that on that one so we'll go over to the bandana for those of you making the bandana and because you've only got this little bit of seam here you treat it in exactly the same way as you do the regular one i'm going to sew a one centimeter seam all the way down there and off the end the difference is that because this front curve here isn't going to get enclosed in another seam. I'm going to double tack. I'm going to back tack on that little edge where the nose is. And you can narrow that seam down as you go as well. So I'm just going to reverse and then go right off the end. So I have got that sewn like that for you okay so i've just sewn there and i've gone a little bit narrower as i've come towards the fold of my fabric make sure you've got right sides together so this one i cut right sides out so i'm now putting it right sides together if you want use your clips not i'm using pins because this is my sewing room and i don't have to worry about leaving pins because i've got a wooden floor I start my seam and then I just graduate it a little bit narrower and double back on it so you don't unravel your seam when you're using your mask. Right, there you go. So now, same thing on this one. We just give it a few snips along this edge here to allow us to turn and for the seam to lie nice and flat. So we've done that now, as you can see, and we are ready for pressing. Go back to the regular one, which is a little bit easier. And I only finger press my masks. I don't actually iron them on the iron, but that is entirely your choice. When you come to turning it, what I do is I put my thumb on the right side and I simply push the seam over to one side. And in this case, I'm going to push it to the right. And I do that all the way along the seam I've created. So when I turn it over, my seam will lie nice and flat. So repeat that with your other one. Also to the right. I'll show you why in a bit. So both of them get pushed either to the left or to the right. It doesn't matter which, but they do both get pressed in the same direction. So I've now got my lining pressed and I've got my outer pressed. I'm going to repeat that on my bandana for that little bit there as well. So I open that up. Push the seam to the right side in my case. Remember, either left or right, but be consistent and use the same side. So there's the bandana one done. That's the nose, by the way. And then I push the lining one to the same direction, also to the right. And I can flip that over and I've now got my two parts of my mask ready to be assembled. I'm going to pause there for a second and I'm going to come back to you.